So with the part drawn and all the tool paths generated, it's time to post the uh, the actual G code uh, so that we can go and machine it. Now there's several things you need to know about that. Uh, first of all, we have four different features here. That's four different milling operations. And depending on how you have your post processor set up, you can post it all as one big old file and the machine will you know, do the first thing it comes to. Then if there's a tool change, it will go to its tool change position and uh, you have to press a button on Mach 3 to get it to start back up and go and do the others. When you're first starting out, it's, it's often simpler to just you know, post the individual feature as an individual file so that I would set up a, a bolt holes file and uh, I execute that. It'll drill the bolt holes or cut the bolt holes and then it'll just stop because it's reached the end of its program and then I'll load up another program to do the next thing etc. So in this case we'll do kind of a hybrid of that. I'm going to separate the uh, bolt holes out into a uh, their own piece of g-code and the way I want to do that is I'm going to turn all the other features off so that they don't post. Now when you right click on any of these features you get a little menu and at the bottom there's a, a feature a, a, a a choice called post yes or no clicking on that will either cause a red X to appear or take a red X away the red X means this will not post that means that it will not generate g-code so I'm only going to leave the first one of the uh, four unchecked the others I'll right click click on post yes or no hit the red X and I know that they will not in fact generate g-code so the only thing that is going to in this case is this feature pocket which when you open it up, right click on geometry and click reselect, you see that it is in fact the bolt holes. So now we go up to cam part and open that up by clicking on the little plus sign. Go to milling tools and right click and I'll go down to post and save as. Now in my case, these two computers are on a home network and they both can see the, uh, the folder that I'll be posting to. If you don't have your computers on the same network, you can just simply tell it to save this into a directory that's on a USB key that you've got stuck in the machine and then physically transfer it to the other machine, load out of the USB key and, uh, and enter the, uh, the generated code into Mach 3. But again, in my case, I'm going to name this something descriptive so I know what I'm doing here. The uh, name of the file overall is a demo bearing plate. So I'll just put bolt holes after that. I'm going to save it as an NC file. And that's good so I'll click save. Now down here in the lower left hand you'll see that it's going to show you the g-code that it generates for this. Uh, so that you can look at it, you know, if you need to look at it, you need to see if you need to edit something in particular, you can have a quick look here. But then I'm going to go and turn that feature off, right click and hit post yes or no, and turn the rest back on. Because you can now see how to separate out and, and uh, generate a different piece of code for each individual feature, there's no real need for me to do it on every single one. I'm going to turn everything with a quarter inch end mill, which is these three operations right here, into one NC file. Because I've got the first one blanked out, it's not going to post. So I'll go up to Milling Tools, right click, Post and Save As. And uh, this one I will name Bearing Pocket and Profile. And when I save it, you'll see the g-code generated for it. And in this case, because there's the same tool on every single operation, it's not going to do a tool change. It's just going to start by drilling this, or cutting this three quarter inch hole, and it's gonna cut this inch and a quarter pocket, and it's gonna go out and profile. And uh, just do one right after the other. And it'll be taking into account that I told it to raise up to three tenths of an inch above the stock surface for its rapids. So once it's done these two, it'll raise up that high, shoot across, pick its starting point which is right here you can see the uh, the vertical line and start in on the profile so that's about it for posting um, next we'll take it out to the shop and and look over
how to load this stuff up into Mach 3 and pretty much how to register the part and get it ready to go and start cutting it. Okay, so here I am out at the table. <coughs> I have uh, a spoil board divided, uh, divided into three parts with lines of threaded inserts into the table beneath it. And that's how I do most of my clamping. Uh, something that you can use to reference pretty easily is lines that are cut into your spoil board. And here I'm going to be using those to measure off to uh, get the board pretty well close to parallel with the uh, actual axes of the machine using a little six inch steel rule there and measuring against the actual uh, cut in the board uh, and these are just basically pieces that I've sliced off of a 2 by 6 and cut some holes through in various spacings to give me uh, a good bit of flexibility for clamping it down and I've just got it wedged against uh, two in the corners here two holding it side to side at the, uh, the far end and then two at the very end holding it all together and this holds it very solidly um, don't really have much of an issue with things pulling loose from there. After that we go to Mach 3 and we'll go ahead and open up and in this case I've, I've got that shared directory that I'm able to just go and uh, and load files into from the other computer and out of the shop the uh, the laptop I've got running the machine I just go and, and pick the uh, proper file in this case we'll get the bolt hole file first uh, and you'll see over there the uh, the representation of the tool paths within the machining space I always zoom that into a relatively uh, large format so it covers most of the screen um, just gives me a good shot of it now I'll bring the uh, the actual machine over and get my X and, and uh, Y reference correctly. Positive right, Y is to the right in that shot. And I'll zero the machine such that the, uh, as you can see the lines there, the X and Y axes lined up next to the part. And then go to the Z axis and bring it down to the top of the stock. And uh, I don't have anything really fancy. Oh, here's the uh, MDI. Uh, inputting manually I go from 100% down to 5% for fine adjustment such as bringing the Z down to the top of the stock and uh, once I get it pretty close then I'll generally use the paper trick because I haven't done anything uh, nice like setting up an auto zeroing system and I just slide a piece of paper underneath the uh, the tip of the tool and bring it down going from uh, from constant down into step mode and just tap it down a thousandth at a time and get it close and I've got some video of, of that kind of in process it's just a piece of regular printer paper underneath as long as it's sliding free then I'm not there once it's actually start feeling some binding with, for the tool tip you're about three thousandths away from the stock at that point and then once that's all ready to go then we'll fire it up and actually start cutting uh, here it's going from bolt hole to bolt hole doing its little circles and then stepping down and doing more circles. Once you get done with this we'll change to the other file and uh, although I edited it out you can probably tell if you look closely that I made two mistakes uh, at this point or in the next uh, process. The first one is that I started cutting without taking away my clamps and putting in those screws that I've been harping about for uh, the past two videos. I realized it just about the time I got the three-quarter inch hole in the center cut all the way through. And here I'm I'm changing over to the other uh, file. Just close that one out and then open the other one. Um, so I stopped everything after I, after I got the three-quarter inch hole cut and took the, uh, the machine out of the hole and just replaced the clamps with the uh, the screws. Then went back in and just let it air cut its way in. It's it, you know, went through the entire tool path, acting like it was cutting the three quarter inch hole. But the video actually picks up at about the point where it's getting back into wood. And there, if you look closely, you'll see that there is that three quarter inch hole in the center of the board. And I uh, just wanted to simulate this. Doing demos, it's really really easy because you've got your mind on a lot of other things and not just the process. 
to miss things. The other thing that I missed, and I don't really have it represented well in the video, is that I didn't uh, really do anything to properly secure the outside of this piece of stock, the part that's not the, uh, the uh, part that I'll be making. And because of that, it, it basically flopped around loose, and I had to hold it, kind of angle it, and move it around to keep it out of the toolpath once I got to the finishing toolpath, which is not a very not good or safe process, and I don't recommend that you do that. So remember to secure everything, not just the part. So it's going through at this point. Uh, it has done its pocketing, and it's going to the profile toolpath, and it's just going to run around, <coughs> uh, I believe, three depths on this. Uh, run around the periphery, come back, step down a quarter inch, run around the periphery again, step down a quarter inch. And I believe I ended it at that point. I didn't actually uh, do a video of the finished toolpath, but that, that's the point where I was holding the vacuum uh, cleaner nozzle with one hand and holding the outer part of the stock away from the tool as it went around the circle. It was pretty comical. Uh, no plywoods were hurt in the making of this. No, no fingers were lost. But always consider, you know, what's going to happen to every piece of, of wood that's on that table because every piece of wood that's on that table is exposed to two horsepower worth of rotating tool. And things get out of hand in a hurry. Uh, beyond that, I don't think I've got a whole lot left to this video. Uh, I'll show the part coming off. I'll probably insert a picture of the part. Oh yeah, one thing. Uh, I'm using upcut uh, end mills, and so that leaves a lot of fuzz around the the edges of the holes, the edges of the cut. A quick sanding job, and I'll, I'll include a picture of the, the uh, finished part. It's It looks much nicer once it's off the table and has had 30 seconds worth of sanding done to it. And here I'm taking the screws out, and you can see the part that uh, that I was having to keep away from the bit. But there's your part. It's got the pocket, the hole in the center, the bolt holes, and everything. Alright, thanks, and I hope this was...